Hello and welcome to our exciting holiday episode of Billion Bullion Base. My name is Allison, here with Logan to talk about holiday movies, our favorites. So we are just going to talk about not necessarily what we think are the best holiday film, but what we most personally enjoy. Do you want me to go first? Yes, please. Okay, so my all-time favorite by a huge margin is the effervescent classic heartwarming musical Meet Me in St. Louis, oh, starring Judy Garland. But Judy Garland herself. I'm surprised yeah. you didn't know that I was going to pick this. So it contains it. such numbers as the trolley song, which I am known to sing at work or anywhere, really, because it's so much on a right? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think they're unrelated. I love everything about this. It has the precocious younger sister. It has the helpful um, older sister. I just love everything about this film. Um, it is chronicles a story of a family who are possibly going to be moving from St. Louis uh, during this year, and they've really made it home. However, the big fair is coming to St. Louis, and the whole buildup is who's going to go to the fair, who is going to be um, taking who? Are they going to have to return from wherever they moved to attend the fair, this big expo? Do you love it? I do. I haven't seen it in a really long time. It's a it's quite a sad film, but uh, it is a very good film. And, you know, St. Louis is a surprisingly cool city. You wouldn't think it would be. So I think that parts <laughs> of it are sad, but it does. it's not... It is not in sad at all. It's um, a bittersweet film. I'd so St. Louis, you've been there with your family. Yeah, it's a and surprisingly cool city. Tell us about a couple of the things there to do. Well. They sounded very interesting. The main two things to do in St. Louis is gooey butter cake, which is incredible. And their special um, Provel cheese pizza, which is like a fake, uh, fake liquid smoke cheese that they put on their pizza there. It's incredible. It's out of this world. Uh, I've had dreams and cravings about it ever since I went there. You can't get it anywhere else. So if you're in St. Louis, enjoy their Provel pizza. And isn't this where the City Museum is? The City Museum is very cool. It's like a huge playground museum with like tons of secret passages and like weird things to find. Um, there's also a wonderful wax museum in the city. I like wax museums. I yeah, don't know why. Too. We've been to one before. Why do we like wax museums? I don't know. I don't know what the appeal is, but I like them. They're fun. I was checking with our culture correspondent, Audrey Albright, and she confirmed that. But the, this is a little bit off track of the holiday theme. But, you know, St. Louis, if you want to spend Christmas in St. Louis, you're welcome to I, do I want so. to sell the film. When people think of Judy Garland, I think oftentimes they just think about Wizard of Oz and Call It A Day. She got nominated for Trials of Nuremberg. She was in all of these musicals. She was in my favorite version of The Star is Born. Sorry, Lady Gaga. I still love her to pieces. Starring, starring Judy Garland, presumably. Yes. Uh, I love the 1950s version. Yeah. So anyway, I, I really recommend Meet Me in St. Louis. What yeah, that's great. So my favorite all-time Christmas film, and it's not even close, is one that no one else has seen or heard of. Um, but it's a tradition in my family to watch it every year. A Children in Wales. It's A Child's Christmas, Christmas. in Wales. It's like a Canadian television production. Um, we somehow saw it when we were young, and it became a family favorite. It's like an hour long. It's real short. But it's based on the Dylan Thomas poem, A Child's Christmas in Wales. And it's got Denim Elliott playing the main character in it. And he um, just tells a story of what his, his Christmas as a child was like in, um, I think, Swansea in Wales. And it's just, it's got everything I want in a Christmas movie. It's totally magical. It captures that childhood wonder and the joy. And you see, like, the family coming in and, the um, you know, all the relations and all the presents and all the food. And it, all the, like, the Christmas carols and the spooky aspect of Christmas, too. It's got everything in it. And the prose is all directly adapted from the poem. That um, the, the dialogue is all direct, directly adapted from the poem. So it's very, very poetic. And it's just a magical film. I think it really captures the magic of Christmas. If you haven't seen it, which you haven't because nobody has, seek it out. It is available on DVD. I think it's available on Peacock Streaming last time I looked. Um, you know, it's well worth a watch. I've seen it. Yeah. Here in this house. Well, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking oh, to the I viewers. See. Our extensive audience. Yes, of our fathers and sisters. Yes. I don't even think my husband watches this after I he don't think so. films it. But maybe after he films it, he'll be more interested in watching it. Maybe. You'll see his, his excellent camera work. All right, good. Um, we also wanted to talk a little bit about a film which you cannot fail to mention in any discussion of holiday films, which is It's a Wonderful Life. Capra. 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 It's so good. Um, I 
I've, I've watched It's a Wonderful Life maybe a hundred times at this point. That seems like it, excessive. I feel like it gets better every time I see it. Um, and I see more in it every time I see it. It's really just, it's funny, it's charming, it's sweet. Um, it captures that, like, joy to be alive and that peace on earth, goodwill towards men thing of Christmas. It's got my favorite guy, Lionel Barrymore, in it, playing Mr. Potter, who I find hilarious and everything. I just love him. Um, I sort of root for Mr. Potter for most of the movie, I have to say, because he's great. Uh, but I just, you know, it's a, it's a Christmas classic. You should all watch It's a Wonderful Life. And interestingly, not a success upon first being released, only became a classic after being available on television for free for many years. That's people. insane to me. Yeah. So Jimmy Stewart really has a great show of this film. Um, if only there was somebody that could do a great impersonation of... Yeah, that would be nice. The other thing I wanted to say about this film um, I had to try. is that... I was watching an interview with Frank Capra about it, and basically he said that he, uh, you know, he used to do like uh, more gritty movies, and he went over and spent some time in in the war. He was fighting in the war, and he saw death and destruction and mayhem, and he came back and he said, "I don't want to make depressing movies anymore. I want to make uplifting movies now." And so this was his first film after coming back from the war to uh, to try to make something more uplifting and and uh, you know more human. And I think it's great. Love it. I, I like that it does not cross the border into saccharine or cloying like some of its contemporary Christmas films do. That's true. I think that like A Miracle on 34th Street that's has exactly that problem. what I was thinking yeah, of. Yeah, it's yep. a little bit too sugary Schmaltzy, sweet, schmaltzy, yes. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, how, what are you going to watch this holiday season? I don't know. We always watch, my family and I always watch Shots Christmas and Wheels on Christmas Eve. That's a tradition. But there's a few like Christmas comedies we like mm -hmm. to watch. We enjoy Four Christmases. We enjoy Fred Claus. We enjoy Elf, those type of films. We'll usually watch some of those. We like to watch the Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yeah. Um, sorry, the the Pee Wee's Big House Christmas special mm -hmm. featuring Grace Grace Jones. Uh, I almost said Grace Kelly. Grace Jones, the Del Rubio triplets. I mean, it's really just this great cast of Pee Wee and his friends. And you get some real, Charo is in it somehow. Did you watch uh, A Christmas Story a lot growing up? No, I didn't. Okay, I didn't. Well, I saw it once or twice. That was a tradition in, in my house as a kid. We used to watch A Christmas Story an awful lot. I'm, you know, I don't watch it as much anymore. I, I think it's still pretty good, though. Well, mm -hmm. I think when you think about Christmas films of our generation, our micro generation, because yeah. you and I are the same age, I think that what most talks about our micro generation, Home Alone. Oh, yeah. Did you see it when it came out? How do you feel about it? I did see it when it came out. Um, you know, I love John Hughes. I love his 80s, like, uh, Brat Pack movies a lot. Yes. Uh, Home Alone Square. is a little bit too slapsticky for me, honestly. Sure, sure. It's a little bit too much of that baby's day out sort of, like, series of, of painful incidents. Um, but there's parts of it I love. I love Catherine O'Hara and I love John Candy. She's so and, good. And they're great in it. So, like, so they kind of, there's a kind of sweetness to it of them trying to get home to, oh. to rescue their son yeah. that I really like. But the whole burglary caper with all the just booby traps, that part I don't really care about. So I love that Catherine O'Hara is in this, playing a completely straight role because she's in that famous acting troupe, the um, Christopher Lloyd. Guest. No, Christopher, Christopher Lloyd. That would be a good troupe too. Yeah, Christopher the Christopher Guest, Guest um, troupe. So you've seen her in things like Best in Show and A Mighty Wind. Uh, and she just plays like a pretty normal, like an uptight yeah, mother. Yeah, one of her least here. kooky roles. It so, is. Yeah. But she's still just so good in it because it's Catherine O'Hara. Um, I liked this film, but I feel like I was almost, almost about to kind of age out of that being like the target audience. Yeah, I think that's right. But I did, I did love Macaulay Culkin. He's just a couple years older than us. Mm -hmm. He's got a brother that's about our age. And my little brother looked so much like Kevin McAllister when he was about, you know, six or seven years old. So any other, um, comments about Catherine O'Hara, Home Alone? Um, about Catherine O'Hara specifically. <laughs> yeah. She was good at Beetlejuice. She really was. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish that, well, why don't they do a Beetlejuice Christmas special? Would you watch that? They probably would. I think they're talking sure. about doing a sequel, so there may be something along those lines. I, I don't know if it'll be Christmas. No, but probably not. If not, I'm there. All right. Well, have a happy holiday to all of our many viewers, and whatever you celebrate, I hope you enjoy your winter break. Do it safely, and wassail. 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 See you in New Year.